scraping my voice. That's exactly what you sound like. This fish can't feel. It can't because otherwise fishing would have been outlawed years ago. Imagine pitching a sport to people where you get a, a chunk of metal, jab it through a living animal, take a photo, then throw it back out into the wild. It wouldn't be done. Except it does. So, are you done now, Ian, with your little graphic story? Okay. Have you heard of the expression memory of a goldfish? Ah, yes, I have, but that is an old wives' tale. You see, goldfish here have a memory of up to five months. Bing, 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 correct. However, I wasn't talking about the goldfish. You. Oh, good one. What did you last eat when you were on a plane? What? It's a simple question. Yeah, I know it's a simple question. I just have no idea what it's got so to do with this. So there you are, you're in the plane. Seats yeah. down. Right. Down goes the tray table. Sure. Maybe someone's walking along. Who is it? The flight attendant. Yeah. What do they say to you? I mean, I don't know. I pre-booked the vegetarian option. So, so they what? say to you, chicken or fish? Easy. Could have just said that. And then I know that you would not pick the chicken because you say chicken tastes too, too much, much like, like everything, everything else. Yeah, yeah. So what did you pick? Well, I just told you I had the vegetarian option. <laughs> He's lying to you, ladies and gentlemen. Not, he had to have the fish. This is not the 1970s. It's not a binary choice between chicken or fish. You can get anything on an aeroplane now. You can get... I know, gluten-free. No, no, you had to have the fish because you didn't have the chicken. It's, <laughs> it's simple deduction. It's Occam's razor. It's, you, you had to have the fish. You, you had to have a fish in front of you. You had to have like a living, breathing fish. You had to see its guts just kind of open up and you open up the skin flap. You stick your hand into its gullet and you just go around in the inside and you pull it out and you put your hand down your throat and you just have fish in you. You had to. I had a spinach and feta parcel with a Greek salad and a lovely balsamic dressing. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, put your left leg in, left leg out, in, out, in, out, you shake it on the boat. You do the hokey cokey and you turn around. That's what it's all about. Five minutes has not been five minutes. No, 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 no. Why does it have to be us? Why can't it be them if they're so bloodthirsty? We said we do this. We got funding to do this. We pitched this for Plymouth Art Weekender, so that's what we'll deliver. Because if the fish doesn't die today, democracy will. No, but that's not what democracy's about. Like, no, why can't we just put it back to them, you know? Like, the thing is with it is, what if they were just caught up in the idea of it, you know? Like, what if they just wanted something to happen? Something to change? Without really thinking of the consequences? Go on then. What, really? Yeah. Well, I can just ask him. Yeah, because it doesn't matter. Alright, fine. People of Plymouth! The governing party here have given you no logical or tangible reason as to why we should kill this fish. It's not for sports, it's not for food, it's for nothing. I urge you, please, look into your hearts and really think before I, you answer this question. Is there anybody here who truly wants to see us kill this fish? No. The, the charity, the animal thing, the P-E-T-A. Uh, P-E-T-A, -E yes. Um, A stands for America, so... Pretty sure it doesn't. Somewhat there. But, 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 all right, British P-E-T-A then. This, a fish in a blender, it's happened before. This isn't new. In 2003, there was a court case that ruled that it was not only humane, but also legal to blend fish. Because it's so quick. 
<laughs> well, what about dog then? Dog wouldn't fit in a blender. Well, it depends on the blender. Depends on the dog. Fine. <laughs> okay, well, what if you shot a dog then? In the head. Quick. Bang. Done. But this is a fish. It's like preparing a finely diced sushi. Oh, no, but where's the line, though? The line? The line for me is somewhere above fish and somewhere below dog. There's a lot of animals in that gap. Name one. <laughs> Lizards. Do you know how much this fish costs? No. £2.50. Oh. That is the value of this fish. And the food? £3. Oh. We are letting something that contributes nothing to our society drain us of funds. You're taking away a life. Um, you can't put a value on a life. I just did. Okay, okay, okay. You are starving this fish of a future. What future? Fish can live up to 30 years. Didn't know that, did you? No, well, according to Plymouth Aquarium, the oldest ever goldfish was 43 years old. And that was from a fun fair in a bag. So, uh, what hardships have you overcome, huh? This isn't some hooker duck, splat the rat, whack a mole fish. This is Jesus on the cross, oh, come on. stigmata through its fins. This is a sacrifice. A sacrifice for what? It doesn't matter. Okay. <coughs> All that matters okay. is people hate fish because they're rubbish. Well, that's not even remotely true. There's 480 million goldfish are bought every year worldwide. Oh, we can all say big numbers, can't we? What does that even mean? No, 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 look, look, just, okay. Fine, this isn't going anywhere, look. Just at least let me feed it one more time, yeah? Yeah? Sorry, Bubbles, I don't want to do this. Do you know what fish food's made out of? No, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. Fish! Shut up. Look on the label. Where does it say that it's... Oh. Fish and vegetables blended together and turned into flakes. All we're doing here is speeding up the process of turning a cannibal into chow. And how could your moral compass not allow for that? Just one more vote. That's all I'm asking. Let me inform them properly with, with facts and, and statistics and common sense. And uh, just so it's fair, you can inform them with whatever it is you do. And um, we can split them 50-50. No, no, I, I'm the governing party, so I need a majority. All right, well, 52-48 then. Fine, but I'm not happy about it. Okay then, ladies and okay, gentlemen, everybody. they split you 52-48. I'm going to take this side over this here. side, please. Come and uh, join me. Yeah. We're going to go around this bit So, uh, what we want to do is, if you can come over here, you can, you can join me. We're going to make some, like, protest posters, because uh, obviously we don't want the fish to die, and uh, the best way to stop this fish dying is for peace and protest. So, for anyone that wants to come over and pay we will be the ones to memorialise. If you know, we have a little thing to about play before the show, so I wouldn't have to unwrap them now, but here we are. Um, I'm going to give you each a bit of clay and ask you to make your best fish. Uh, this might take a little while. We didn't expect so many eager, eager murderers. So if you would like to come up to the table and take a bit of clay yourself, we can do it two at a time. So yeah, just take a little lump of clay there. Yeah, all my other Is anyone interested? Anyone interested? Did we get to take your home? Like, just a little bit of brushes. Come and help Remember yourself, there's canvases there. I just want to paint something to really help save this fish's life. Uh, you only need a little bit, they're not very big fish. One of these kind of placards or something. Just for the kids. No, no, it's very Everyone can get involved in politics. Paint something fish related, but ideally we want something to... Save the fish. Save the fish, yeah. Yeah, let's write that. You can, of course you can, yeah. Let's write it in Brad. Yeah, don't worry about their side, they're doing something rubbish. This... We're doing something real over here, we're making something safe with our hands. We're doing something like save the fish. Like really sort of the earth over here. Give it a go. Yeah. <laughs> A bit more. We've got quite a bit of clay. Go ahead and find a bit of wall. Uh, if any bits of rubbish fall to the floor, we're not going to let us. <laughs> Most things are. Yeah, we've got a little bit of clay over here. Interesting.
of Weapons of Sound. We are in Plymouth and we are living the dream playing some junk percussion for you guys. Are you on Facebook? We are on Facebook. Weapons of Sound on Facebook. Weapons of Sound on Twitter. Thank you very much. Thank you. you <laughs> Thank you.
Right, so you've been very quite so you've been very busy in here and you've got lots of on the go ready for 2020 as well. Uh, well starting to, starting to, yeah. But also other pieces to finish first. Yeah. yeah. It's very busy now, isn't it? Now you've taken over completely. Yes, yeah, yeah, I've been here for nearly six months nearly. Yeah. Um, yeah, almost, and been very busy. Yeah. yeah. That's one. Yeah. Good luck with the weekend. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers, you. Chris. This is the, I like this yellow uh, piece, Martin. Yes, where I've done a bit of uh, bling with the frame, or brought the frame in with the painting. So it's been a year since we last, no, it's Valentine's Day when we last... Was it Valentine's Day we had a go at this? Yes, yeah, probably was. Yeah. Had a go at it, yeah. So uh, what's been happening since Valentine's Day? Um, I, well, I, I've sort of been taking my time this year. I'm on a bit of a spectacle year off. Yes. Um, although I've done a few paintings, but um, I'll be looking for a new house to live in and things like that. So yeah. I'm looking for a new exciting year next year because I found me out. I found a fantastic space with a studio. Yes. Um, where so you can show the studio or you still have this one? No, I'll keep this as my sort of showcase and then that will be my studio. Um, I find that I come here and I, I pontificate too much and when I get home I want to do something and then I'm too far away from here. Yeah. So I've got a lovely studio at home. I'll probably dip in there in the evenings and create wonders that go through my mind, you know. Um, yes. And I think I need a different kind of environment. You know, yes. I've got a lovely garden as well. But we'll have to sort of it. Is it outside from it? It's, um, it's on the outskirts. Yeah, yeah. It's actually it's in the Plymouth Ring, put it that way. Yeah. I'll tell you where. <laughs> no, don't tell me. You don't want all the people to try and get you up. So yeah, it's uh, your your art's very vibrant and colourful and cheerful in in doing the new Britain today. Well, Britain with the weather today. Uh, and a mixture of both, really. Well, the nicer comments I get from people that stroll in is just that they go, "Wow, look at the colours! The colours are amazing!" and so on and so forth, which is great. You know, that's that's it lift, I lift people. Yes. You know, they can stand. There was a gentleman in just now, wasn't there? And his two sons, I guess. And yes. they spent a long time looking. Yeah. Um, and and I sort of changed. Didn't say what well, coming. What I said, but he sort of he carried on looking. He was look, you know, taking it in. He was yeah. going into another world, which 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 is what I think where I am at in another world. Like, like going into Lincoln. This is gallery in the Barbican. Uh, before my time, yeah. before my time, I missed yeah. all that, unfortunately. Yeah, it was like going into a TARDIS, into TARDIS a wall to wall of yeah, yeah, art, you know, breathtaking. Yeah, yeah. well, hopefully so it won't be like that because I want to. I want to get some of this out and get a bit of air, breath. Yeah. You know, make the paintings breathe a bit more with some space, yeah. so people can see them a bit more clearly. Um, well, this thing comes around, it's Plymouth Art Weekender again, you weren't registered this year, but you still... I didn't this year, I know, I know, I didn't know what I was doing, as I say, I sort of thought, well, I, I've done a few early shows this year, and I was thinking forward, and I sort of, things got in the way, you know, and I just yeah. thought, I don't know what I'm doing, whether I'll still be in this space. You or... don't have to be registered to be playing the part, part, part of Plymouth Art Weekender well, anyway, no. because you're an artist I'm, in Plymouth, so you you're know, automatically part of it. As someone kindly, kindly put when they were advertised in the William Yard the other day, famed artist, so... Yes kind of get my little mantle slowly yes <laughs> um, which is not what I aim at but so uh, these are th these are your mantle pieces are they my mantle pieces <laughs> well they'll all fit about above anyone's mantle pieces <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah that's true yeah well no yeah. maybe not they'd have to have a big house oh there's some paintings that fit all sizes in here <laughs> that's you know. true yeah yeah it's really nice Common used to say funny to say that lot is all you need a big house for these yeah. yeah I've got paintings that big yeah next to the big paintings I'm sure you can fit one of those in you know yeah. it's a common <laughs> nice one common chit chat I have with people, you know, because yeah. they're drawn, I guess, to, to the, the main pieces where the art is really happening yeah. in, the, in the bigger pieces. Yeah. Um, in fact, my biggest pieces aren't on shows, I've got room in here. So. Artists should always be drawn to something. Me is... Uh, pale uh, words. Yeah, oh, I see. And Glyn White in the Barbican said, are you all white, oh, yeah. red, green or blue? 
Am I white, red, green or blue? I still don't get the question. <laughs> no, he's blue and white in White Lane, the Barbican. Well, yes. And he's part of Plymouth Art Weekend uh, yes. as well. Yeah, yeah. So Cashew is being part of it all the time because you been one of the longest artists in Plymouth by now I should think. Well I remember when the art weekend started uh, yeah. and I was there in all the meetings and the chat about it all and it's exciting stuff because prior to that and you know other smaller things that are happening yeah I've always spoke out to, so, to the councillors so and what you, have when you. When did you start then the Plymouth Art Weekenders? Uh, five years ago. Is that all? Five years ago so that would have been 2014. Yeah. I mean, prior to that, there were a few things I forget. And how was it in, in, at the start? Great, the enthusiasm was, yeah. was tremendous. It was kind of at a time where um, Gordon Dalton actually presented himself yes. through, was it through the Arts Council, I'm not sure. Um, I think he'd done it in somewhere else and somewhere else and then Plymouth, he got wind of Plymouth, if you like. And yes. when he arrived, there was already a good group of people like Peter Davy and uh, various other people. Donald Whitten, I know called Tom Cobb. Yeah, and, and, and Don Moore. And I was playing words. They were all floating around, yeah. um, working together for something, yeah. or mainly to, to be part and increase the art scene of Plymouth. Yes. And that's certainly what, what um, was happening at the time. I think it could have evolved into something like Edinburgh if they really pushed it, because it became really big last year and it's dropped down again to almost nothing again this, this year. Has it? I haven't obviously uh, been uh, around. I never get sick because I'm here. Into the city with the Atlantic projects. I guess so. Uh, there's a lot going on next year. Yeah, yeah for 2020. Um, and as you say, the Atlantic the project last year was fantastic. But yes, it was, it was a one-off, I guess, yeah. you know. Um, it'd be nice to bring something like that back again because it really did mirror nicely with the yeah. art weekend, didn't it? Now you remind yeah, me, yeah. and went on for three weeks. It was inspiring because it, it was going on the waterfront and there it was on Drake's Island. Yeah. Right across, they were using the geography of the area. I, I, I would surmise. And also the Devil's Point. I would surmise that the energies that have put those sort of things on are working to the Mayflower 400 I next think year. I so too as well. Because um, you're going to have a light spectacular which is going to start it all off in the, in the Royal William Yard this November. In November. We've had 20th. that the illuminate. We've had that three years now, I yeah. think. So this should be bigger and better, I'm yeah. sure, than the Absolutely. other ones have already already been quite incredible. Yeah. Hopefully it's not raining. It <laughs> um, didn't matter. It was because they had a sprinkler system that was soaking you. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> the rain that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. So I'll yeah, yeah. wear underwater GoPro for that. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got customers coming in, so that's great. You've had a vibrant oh, queue of people few, coming in. A few today. people coming today, which is great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, uh, thanks, thanks a lot, Martin. Okay, I'll right, see cheers. you next year. Are you open seven days a week? No, I'm only open on Saturday, Sundays at the moment. Yeah. Um, often here, some afternoons through the week. Yeah. Um, but if people want to come and visit, they can always call me or email me because yes. I'm not far away. Okay. Any time of the week. Thanks, that's awesome. Okay. Thank you.